Hi there, welcome to the Practical Performance Analyst and this is uh, Trevor. In today's session we'll cover the fundamentals of performance requirements gathering. We'll take a look at um, the um, importance of performance requirements gathering across the uh, software development lifecycle, the activities involved in performance requirements gathering and some of the challenges um, that you would face as a Practical Performance Analyst while conducting performance requirements gathering. So uh, let's look at the agenda for the session today. Um, we'll start off by uh, going over the performance engineering life cycle. We'll then look at proactive performance management. What does proactive performance management mean? Um, we'll then move on to performance requirements gathering as a process. We'll talk about the various different metrics from a non-functional requirement standpoint that you would need to focus on. Let's uh, then look at why performance requirements gathering is important and how it impacts us across the development lifecycle. We look at the process in detail, focus on the challenges involved while uh, uh, executing performance requirements gathering, then move on to deliverables and then look at resources and tools. So in a nutshell today our focus will be looking at performance requirements gathering across the uh, uh, of the program, the objectives of the process, um, how you would go about conducting performance requirements gathering, determining the non-functional requirements um, and eventually uh, rounding out with uh, the challenges um, and resources and tools and deliverables. So let's start out by looking at the performance engineering life cycle. Now as we've mentioned earlier, the, what you, you've got on the left hand side is the software development life cycle and the software development life cycle is based on the waterfall development model that addresses functional requirements stage, a stage that focuses on functional requirements gathering, architecture and design, application build, system test, system integrated test, user acceptance test and then deploy in production um, simultaneously from a performance engineering standpoint. At the functional requirements gathering stage, you focus on non-functional requirements gathering. Um, at this stage, you're focused on determining the non-functional requirements for the application, um, basically focused around performance and scalability. At the non-functional requirements stage, your objective is to basically define the non-functional requirements for the application, work with the customer, work with business, work with IT, um, and, and document the non-functional requirements and get them signed off. At the architecture and design stage, from a performance standpoint, you're focused on designing the application from a performance perspective, working with the architecture teams, providing the necessary input in building a high performance application, reviewing the application architecture, reviewing the, de the deployment plans, the deployment platform, um, modeling performance using a combination of statistical, mathematical, or simulation modeling techniques to validate performance of the application for a combination of application architecture and infrastructure architecture. From a build perspective, you're, you're looking at uh, working with the development teams closely, translating the non-functional requirements to uh, TOIs, performance targets for the developers, unit code performance tests, code optimization. Um, so it's, it's proactive performance all through. From a system integrated test perspective, um, um, I, once, the, once the application moves into system into, into SIT, UAT, uh, from a performance perspective, we are looking at uh, continuous performance tests, ongoing performance tests in terms of validating performance of the application. And finally, once the application goes into production, you're looking at monitoring the application proactively and performing capacity management. So the performance engineering life cycle, as we've mentioned earlier, defines a set of roles, responsibilities, activities that need to be performed across the development life cycle. And the performance engineering life cycle <coughs> provides a list of tasks that um, run in parallel to the existing set of tasks across the development life cycle. Um, very, very important to note that performance engineering life cycle is an, uh, performance is an ongoing process. Um, it's, it's not that once <coughs> performance, unfortunately, once you've defined your requirements, it doesn't end with that. Or once you finish performance test, it doesn't end with that. Performance engineering and performance as a whole is 
um, an ongoing process, you have to address it proactively across the development lifecycle. So this is in a nutshell was the performance engineering lifecycle. Let's move on to basically looking at proactive performance. What is proactive performance management? So proactive performance management in a nutshell is about addressing performance proactively across the development lifecycle. You start off by defining your requirements. At the requirements gathering stage, you focused, you put your energy in focusing on defining the non-functional requirements for the application. As a practical performance analyst, you you have to be focused on looking at performance proactively across the development life cycle. And these basically include tasks like requirements analysis with the objective of documenting non-functional requirements, um, then moving on to uh, performance modeling and capacity planning. Now performance modeling and capacity planning include a set of tasks um, that ideally get performed at the design stage where, where you validate the application architecture, where you validate the, uh, the, the build platform, where you validate the designs that are being chosen for the application. From a capacity planning perspective, you're looking at using a set of tools and techniques to validate the infrastructure requirement, to determine the infrastructure requirement. Um, so performance modeling and capacity planning at the design stage are a set of activities that you perform proactively to validate design decisions based on the information available at that, at that point in time. From there on, you move on to build optimization, build an optimization which focuses on a key set of tasks um, that address performance proactively across the build cycle. So rather than waiting for the uh, uh, performance bottleneck to be built into the code, you're working proactively with the build teams, with the development teams in terms of setting performance targets, which are based on the non-functional requirements that you determine at the requirements analysis stage, um, and then working with them proactively in terms of determining the bottlenecks across the application code, um, uh, um, um, performing a unit performance tests and optimizing code um, uh, where required. And then you move on to the performance testing stage which obviously is validating application performance for the modules that are built. Now again, from a performance testing standpoint, you, you, from a, you, you don't really want to wait until the whole application is available. Performance test early, performance test quickly, performance test as frequently as possible. Obviously, you would have heard this numerous times in the past. It's easier said than done, but it is important that you performance test as early as possible. You're building through your performance modeling, um, at the design stage, so whether you used your uh, uh, mathematical or simulation models, um, you've been able to validate um, your infrastructure design decisions, your uh, application architecture decisions. You then move on to build an optimization wherein you work with the development teams proactively. At performance testing stage, you do the same thing. You work proactively, you, you performance test regularly, you performance test often, you performance test in short cycles with the objective of providing, going back to the development team and providing feedback um, on different components. From a monitoring perspective, of course, you set up application performance monitoring, infrastructure performance monitoring, transactional performance monitoring for the application in production. And once you go live, you capture the performance metrics, both from a business workload standpoint, from an infrastructure workload standpoint, and use them for purposes of capacity management. So proactive performance management is a combination of tasks performed proactively across the development life cycle um, to, towards managing the performance of the application. And managing the performance of the application is again something that's highly relative. Um, performance is highly relative. Um, it, everything depends upon the uh, non-functional requirements that you defined. Um, it, de it depends upon the amount of money that the customer is willing to spend. It depends upon your situation. It depends upon the application. So once you define your non-functional requirements, you then work proactively across the development life cycle um, towards managing the performance of the application on a proactive basis. <clears throat> so what is performance requirements gathering? So performance requirements gathering is a process whose objective is to determine all the relevant non-functional requirements and non-functional requirements could mean different things it could mean different things in the context of different applications non-functional requirements could mean different things in the context of different platforms but however 
from a practical from a practical performance analyst standpoint a performance requirements gathering process is a process that's focused on determining the non-functional requirements now ideally non-functional requirements consist of different things it consists of um, um, security related non-functional requirements relate reliability availability failover capability maintainability usability etc however from a practical performance analyst standpoint your focus is primarily are, uh, around determining the performance and scalability non-functional requirements for the application and underlying application infrastructure now performance requirements gathering is conducted at the functional requirements gathering stage which is early on in the development cycle purely with the objective of determining performance and scalability requirements and again these non-functional requirements would vary based on the nature of your application based on the nature of your workload and <coughs> that your application has to process so what what are these non-functional requirements that we are talking about and, and, and how does it translate to your application so as we mentioned earlier your non-functional requirements would vary based on the nature of your workload however in terms of examples you're looking at from a non-functional requirements perspective we are focused on performance and scalability and the non-functional requirements that really matter to us are aspects like user concurrency the number of concurrent users in the application transactional throughput per unit of time which is the number of transactions being executed by the application per unit of time volume of data processed by batch jobs message workload processed by the system <clears throat> etc so non functional requirements are a set of metrics that need to be determined for your application and it would it basically varies based on the nature of workload that you process so as an outcome of the performance requirements gathering phase you would have delivered a non functional requirements document and have it signed off by business and IT um, and basically have all your stakeholders your business stakeholders your application stakeholders um, your IT stakeholders on the same page and get them to agree on the non-functional requirements that eventually uh, your build team will 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 basically intend to meet um, your build team needs to meet and from a performance validation process standpoint you would need to basically validate so the non-functional requirements is one of the most important parts of the performance engineering process unfortunately skipped um, and not focused on um, in most programs and this is basically what will eventually get you into trouble so it's very very important as a practical performance analyst that you focus on determining your non-functional requirements you put a lot of time and energy into understanding what the non-functional requirements are get an agreement from business from IT from architecture from your program leads um, and and make sure that you managed stakeholder expectations accordingly and and make sure that everyone's on the same page so as an outcome to this process there are two main documents that you would want to nail down or you would want to deliver um, the application non-functional requirements is definitely the first one um, and and the second one would basically be the, the workload the workload as I mentioned in the past is nothing but a combination of um, uh, tasks that are performed by the system um, and and documenting the workload at the start basically ensures that everyone is on the same page with regards to the the type of workload that the system is basically expected to process um, for the given non-functional requirements so on this slide what i've done is i've provided a you know brief um, overview of the different non-functional metrics or non-functional requirements you would come across based on your workload type so let's let's look at the different workload types obviously um, it's not possible to cover all the different workload types that exist out there however i have attempted to cover some of the most common workload types um, I've addressed online transaction processing or OLTP batch workloads messaging workloads and workflow um, from an online transaction processing standpoint when you're focusing on determining your performance requirements or your non-functional requirements obviously the metrics that come to mind are 
user concurrency, transactional throughput, and infrastructure utilization. Now do keep in mind, your NFRs need to be defined for your application. Overall, they are end-to-end -end NFRs, but eventually your end-to-end -end NFRs will be broken down by different application tiers. For batch workload, you, 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 you're focusing on duration of the batch run, volume of data processed, number of records processed, and infrastructure utilization for the relevant tiers. For messaging workload, number of messages processed, size of the message processed, um, the number of messages processed within a given time frame, and infrastructure utilization. For workflow, obviously number of workflow messages processed, size of the workflow messages, number of workflow messages processed within a given time interval, and infrastructure utilization. Now again, um, it's uh, while I have listed down these four different co workload components and metrics for these four different workload components that you would need to focus on. Um, <clears throat> obviously, from a production standpoint or, or from in, with regards to systems that exist in production, it is rare that a system processes just one workload at any given point in time. Um, in, practic in, in practicality, you would find as a practical performance analyst, things are a lot more complex. Systems tend to process a combination of different workloads at any given point in time. And then that complicates things for you as a practical performance analyst. That makes things a lot more difficult because um, you are now uh, uh, you are now tasked, tasked with not just defining the non-functional requirements for workloads that overlap, but you are also basically um, expected to model performance of the of the system for a combination of workloads and make sure that those the system meets those non-functional requirements so work determining the workload is very very key towards determining sensible non-functional requirements again it's it's important over here to be very very practical as a practical performance analyst be very very practical um, look at the application and the way it runs today in production look at the competition and look at what um, the industry does with uh, or, or what are the industry standards with regards to um, workload processing for that particular application and then determine your non-functional requirements and keep in mind if you have multiple workloads being processed in the same box you've got to be a lot more careful you have to be careful in the way you define and validate your non-functional requirements so why is performance requirements gathering important of course we briefly touched upon this in the past in the earlier slides of this part of this session but um practic i mean basically document you need to document your non-functional requirements if you don't have non-functional requirements what are you going to test against most of the times um in my experience working with clients around the world you um you you get yourself into situations wherein you have to validate performance for a given application but unfortunately the performance requirements are very loosely defined or or most of the times they don't exist now what people fail to understand is um similar uh, is, is basically while development teams or while design teams are focused on documenting functional requirements it is very very important that performance engineering teams focus on determining non-functional requirements for the application um, to ensure that everyone is on the same page to basically ensure that business and IT agree to the volumetrics agree on the workload that the application will be built to process so that IT and business agree on the um, the performance characteristics of the application so that everyone is on the same page performance requirements or determining a non-functional requirements from a performance analyst standpoint helps you determine the tier level targets that you need uh, for your build process um, so that you can define the tier level targets work with your build teams and ensure that performance targets are met um, setting performance requirements also basically helps you set the expectations and manage expectations for different IT and business um, stakeholders across the organization more importantly once you define your non-functional requirements, you understood your non-functional requirements, you understood the workload that the application needs to process for those given non-functional requirements, you 
are then able to work with the design teams and provide them input on infrastructure design on the application architecture and obviously from a tooling standpoint you now are able to decide or you have a good understanding to be able to recommend tools for performance testing performance modeling performance monitoring capacity management etc so performance requirements gathering at the end of the day is a process whose objective is to determine relevant non-functional requirements for your different workloads be they um, be the i mean the workloads could be oltp batch messaging workflow etc um, and the objective of of, of, of defining a non-functional requirements is to basically work with your development teams proactively in, te in terms of defining the tier level targets um, and making sure the targets are met in terms of working with the build teams proactively um, the design teams proactively um, and providing recommendations around the design the infrastructure application design towards ensuring a high performance application is built and most importantly working with IT and business setting the expectations and managing the expectations across the development life cycle so let's look at the performance requirements gathering process um, it, I mean there are quite a few steps over here obviously not all of them would be relevant to you do take away um, aspects of the process that are relevant to your organization that are relevant to you so from a performance requirements gathering process the most important part you generally start off by understanding the business goals understanding the program goals get an understanding of what the customer is trying to do get the business requirements documents or BRD understand the you know the overall uh, um, requirements understand the reasoning behind um, um, uh, 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 the program get an understanding of the performance issues that the client has had in the past go and speak to your um, uh, go and speak to people who've been on the program speak to customers who've been using the application understand try to get a context behind the uh, program the reason why i say all of this is it's at the end of the day yes as a practical performance analyst you're tasked with delivering performance for the given application however having a con having the context and understanding the issues that have led to setting up the program in the first place would basically give you a better understanding of what you're trying to do um, review the business requirements documents and start and start collecting data or data gathering now data gathering can mean different things based on the nature of your workload but data gathering essentially at the requirements gathering stage is about asking the right questions um, speaking to IT, speaking to business understanding performance issues that the application has faced in the past um, understanding the expectations for the future application speaking to the design guys to understand what is it they've got in mind speaking to the solution experts and understand what needs to be done to build a high performance application speak to your peers in this space who have experience developing similar applications to understand potential performance issues that you could face so data gathering at this stage is about putting in a lot of time energy effort in in understanding the relevant performance issues for the application the relevant non-functional requirements for the application the relevant workload for the application now if you're lucky and if, if the application has a previous avatar available in production obviously you want to extract data for that application so you go um, 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 you work closely with IT you work closely with, with business request data extract request data be extracted from production for the different workload drivers um, extract the data transform it analyze it visualize it to give you a good understanding of the performance issues that the customer has faced in the past um, not just that extracting data from production um, for your uh, work for, for the different workload drivers will also help you accurately predict workload growth based on the future business initiatives so it's important to ask the right questions understand the right workload drivers for the application understand the context behind which the program was set up obtain data for the relevant workload drivers um, and 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 analyze it view it with the objective of forecasting workload growth with the objective of defining and non-functional requirements 
um, once you've defined, once you've understood your data, once you've been, once you've basically visualized it, you worked with the customer to understand the future growth. Um, you want to then document all of that. You want to document the 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 workload. You want to document the workload growth. You want to spend time then working with the development teams and in working with the design teams in understanding the application architecture, the platform architecture. Um, understand how the application architecture and platform architecture are this are being designed to meet the business uh, requirements from a non-functional standpoint from a tooling perspective it's important that you understand the uh, uh, the different tools required it's important that you assess the tool requirements sorry in the first place assess the tooling requirements um, based on all the work that you've done so far in terms of understanding the business objectives business goals the uh, 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 the application workload the non-functional requirements the platform architecture the infrastructure platform architecture application platform architecture you would have you should be now able to determine tooling requirements for the program it, it's important that you recommend the right set of tools um, again, based on our experiences, we've seen programs under invest in tools only having to regret later on. So it's important at, at this stage that you take a step back, um, you analyze all the requirements that you've gathered so far, you analyze your understanding of the workload, your understanding of the application architecture, the, the platform architecture, your understanding of the business goals, objectives, um, and then recommend the right tool sets. Now, performance engineering tools can be very very expensive um, um, I'm sure most of you will agree with me that um, uh, performance testing performance monitoring capacity management tools in this space are very very expensive hard to come by um, and uh, you it, 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 it makes a lot of sense to raise a request early on flag off uh, any tool gaps that might uh, that might exist and work with business and IT in procuring the right set of tools so you define the overall non-functional requirements and then basically translate them to tier wise non-functional requirements which again is very essential because you need to work with the development teams um, across the different application tiers um, the, sub the, uh, uh, the admin teams across the different application tiers um, and make sure that each one of those teams are developing or the modules that each one of those teams develop meet the, the respective non-functional requirements and eventually you want to document all of your non-functional requirements you want to document your workload two key aspects that need to get documented that need to get signed off by IT and business so what are the challenges involved obviously um, lack of understanding of performance engineering is probably one of the biggest issues that you'll face most organizations um, and most IT teams lack a good understanding of performance and I think as a practical performance analyst it is up to you to basically um, spend time with the customer, educate them, educate them for your benefit, educate them for their benefit. Um, lack of um, understanding of production metrics um, for business and infrastructure workload. The inability to extract data for business and infrastructure workload from production systems. And this sometimes can be a real challenge. The inability to access relevant workload metrics from production becomes a very big challenge because without a view of the past it is very very difficult to predict the future of course predicting the future based on a view of the past isn't good but having a view of the past having a view of the workload or the application behavior in the past gives you a good understanding of of the user patterns gives you a good understanding of business growth and using that data you can basically the, you, you, you can take the data, you can then work with business and then you can, it becomes easier for you to extrapolate um, growth of that workload into the future. So lack of access to production systems to extract relevant business and infrastructure workload makes, can make things really, really tough for you. Mm, lack of industry standard tools to uh, analyze, model and visualize data can be another challenge. Um, lack of capable resources to assist with performance requirements gathering and, and like everything else in performance um, unfortunately because of lack of standards which we which we will try to address over the next few months and years you will definitely be faced with um, challenges trying to get the right set of people 
So from a deliverable standpoint, what essentially do you need to deliver? Um, you, from a, as a practical performance analyst, there are a whole host of documents that need to get delivered at this stage. Um, the non-functional requirements document for the program is the obvious um, uh, is one of the obvious documents. Your workload, which is which basically your workload document for performance test, within, which basically documents the various different aspects of workload that your system will have to manage or have to process, and and and, and which will then be um, part of your performance test and be validated in performance test needs to get documented. So your workload for performance test is really really key. It's important to get your workload right. Your workload for capacity management is important as well. It's important to understand what are the different aspects of workload that the system is expected to manage in production. And, and, and that, that will then form the basis of your capacity management strategy. Recommendations for infrastructure capacity based on the learning that you had, based on all the effort that you put in in terms of defining your non-functional requirements, um, defining your workload, you should now be able to work with the design teams um, the infrastructure design teams, the application design teams and provide relevant input on designing a high performance application. Work with your peers in the performance engineering space, um, understand potential issues, identify potential issues that you might encounter while building um, 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 applications and then work with your, your build and design teams and provide them the relevant input. And obviously provide recommendations on, on tooling and tool licenses. So a few set of links that will help you understand um, a performance requirements gathering, performance requ the performance requirements gathering process in a lot more detail. You'll find a video on performance requirements. You sorry, you'll find documentation by Dr. Rajesh Mansharmani on practical performance uh, at Practical Performance Analyst. Um, do take a look at uh, the articles written by Dr. Rajesh. Um, covers a whole host of topics. He's written some really nice um, and interesting papers on performance, and he's he's also written a wonderful paper on uh, performance requirements gathering. I would I would recommend that as a good read. The other one would be the CMG paper on performance analysis, performance requirements analysis. Link for which is, has been provided on the slide. Um, you'll also find uh, a, a link to this from our uh, 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 from our tools section. Uh, resources section sorry so thank you guys um, thanks for taking the time and listening to us we um, and we appreciate um, 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 you taking the time and, and, and being present and, and listening to this tutorial um, we would request you to take some time and support us um, and, and basically share the links sh uh, click on the social media links on this page click on the social media links at the website um, and help and basically help promote the practical performance analyst with the objective of educating um, uh, people on performance engineering concepts um, thanks so much for taking the time we look forward to your support and uh, until the next tutorial cheers